Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar with Cosmetic Laser Dermatology and Dr. Sabrina Favi. Very happy to have you all. I'll just give everyone a few minutes to get situated and log on and get their everything with Zoom together. Um, on the bottom of your screen, you'll notice there is a Q&A button. That is the best place to start putting in any questions that you have for Dr. Fabi. You can put them in now if you already know what you want to ask. You can do it as she's speaking throughout her presentation or at the end when we get to the Q&A portion. But today, Dr. Fabi is going to be speaking about beauty by the decade. So she's going to be really going through what the best treatments are and showing some of her results of people in their 20s, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, because rejuvenation really is different depending on if you're a 25-year-old or a 55-year-old. So we're very excited to see um, all of her results and hear all of her great information today. Before we get started, we do want to do a little poll so Dr. Fabi knows who she's speaking with on this webinar. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to launch a poll right now that should pop up on your screen here. So now it should be there and it asks, what decade are you in? So just tell us so we know who's here so we make sure that we are addressing your needs. And I'll give you guys another 20 seconds to think about your age. <laughs> it is anonymous. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be shy. And there is an other. We'll do like another five seconds. Try to get in your info. Some of you aren't voting. Maybe you're here just listening. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna close the poll. And I am going to share the results so Dr. Mm. Fabi can see. So interesting. So most of you are in your 50s, 60s, or 70s, and only one person in their 20s. So you get your own whole little portion of the presentation. <laughs> But I'm really glad. Um, Dr. Fabi, did you see this? Yes, I saw Perfect. it. Thank you. Thank you all for, for answering. That helps a lot. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, everyone, I see some of you are already starting to put some questions here into the Q&A. So you must know where it is. That's perfect. Oh, Marissa said she didn't see the poll. Um, I'm not sure. Most people did. Sorry. Maybe I closed it before you signed on. Anyways, so and for the rest... Yeah. Right now, like my, my, my uh, little, um, oh yeah, sorry, hold on. My presentation is, is just uh, saving. Okay, so perfect. We can maybe ask the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, for those of you in your 20s, which there are not a lot, we have um, two questions. I guess everyone can still answer them. It doesn't have to be only the people in their 20s. But here's the first question. So do you struggle with acne? Yes, constantly. Consistently, yes, occasionally, or no. I personally will be very jealous of anyone that says no, because I think most everyone does at least occasionally. And acne, although we are talking about it in the 20 year old section, it is something that can affect people of all age. I know myself um, going through pregnancies, it, might, it totally changed my skin, and all of a sudden I have more than I would like. Okay, so I'm going to end this poll and share the results. Mm. So a decent percentage of you said no. I'm very jealous, but you're very lucky. Um, but most of you deal with acne occasionally. So thank you for that. And then one more poll right before we get started here. And Risa, it's still... Sorry, guys. It's, it's okay. Dr. Fabi's putting together a fabulous webinar for no, you. No, it's... Uh, it's, it's my keynote is not cooperating, so give me, just bear with me. No problem. So here's the next question. So do you have acne scars? So this one's pretty easy, yes or no. They could be old, they could be new. Hi, Debbie, thanks for saying hi. Hi, Debbie. All right, I'll give you guys a few more seconds to answer this question about acne scars. And there's lots of different types of acne scars, but this is just, do you have any type of acne scar? All right, I think everyone has their answers in. 
So most people, 60% of you do not have acne scars, but 40% of you do. That's interesting. Of those of you that chose to answer. That's great. Thank you for that. Perfect. All right. All right, so I see a lot of you starting to put in questions. So just one more time, because a few more of you um, joined since I announced, but you are joining the webinar with Dr. Sabrina Fabi speaking on beauty by the decade. She's going to go through all the treatments and um, best practices for people, no matter if you're in your 20s, 50s, or 70s. And on the bottom of your screen is a little Q&A that you can populate questions that you have for Dr. Fabi as we get going through the presentation or now. Okay. So um, Dr. Fabi is a board certified dermatologist. She's been with cosmetic dermatology for, I don't even know how Ten long years. now. 10 years, wow. Okay, so perfect, our beauty by the decade and she's been with us for a decade. Um, but Dr. Fabi is very experienced in all types of cosmetic dermatology, from injectables to lasers to body sculpting and skin tightening to veins. Um, so today, because this topic is kind of broad and it's about rejuvenation for all the ages, I think she'll touch on all the little areas of her expertise. Um, of course, all of our physicians at um, CL Derm can do a number of these procedures. So if you happen to be someone else's patient, that's okay. Um, and we welcome you from wherever you are in the world. At the end of this webinar, there's a little survey that is gonna ask where you are tuning in from and if you enjoyed it today and any future suggestions. So when that pops up at the end, we would appreciate your feedback. And just to give Dr. Fabi one more minute yes. of time, um, you're ready to share whenever. I'm ready to share. Perfect. So I'm just going to, um, I just want to uh, welcome everyone who's joining us. I really appreciate you uh, taking time from your evening. This has been a success for our practice uh, because a lot of patients always want to ask a lot of detailed questions. And I know many of you may see even other doctors in other states or offices. Um, and it's good to have a fundamental understanding about why you're seeing the changes that you're seeing. Um, people come in requesting a treatment, but they don't even know why they need the treatment. Um, and so the point of this lecture series is to educate you, give you a little bit more of an in-depth picture and understanding as to why you're seeing the changes that you're seeing so that you can make a more educated decision about your overall health of your face as well as your body. So um, with that, it's, I just share a screen, right, Risa? Can you see my screen now? Uh, not yet, but yes, you just click share screen. And um, Shelby, you just asked a question. Would you prefer I use the chat or the Q&A? Please use the Q&A if you can to ask your questions. Okay. And yep, we see your screen now once you share. And just so everyone also knows um, in, our, in this COVID environment, we are open. Dr. Fabi is available to see patients as consultations. We are doing all treatments. And in case you're not fully comfortable with that, she is also available for a virtual consultation just to get the game ball going. So um, I'm going to be going over beauty by the decade. This is very broad and there's a lot of generalization. We understand that there's obviously going to be uh, genetic variations in some people that are considered super agers, and they just happen to age better than the rest of us. Um, and so some of these changes apply to people on average. Uh, you may not see some of these changes in a particular decade. You may see them later in your life, and that's beautiful, but it's to give you an understanding of on average why certain things happen in a particular decade. Um, um, and so it still doesn't substitute a consultation uh, to visit and see one of us to be able to, uh, you know, look at you, assess you and see what's really going on based on your individual anatomy, genetics and ethnicity. Because we understand that, for instance, in a study that Hispanics on average age about 10 years um, different than maybe a Caucasian subtype, um, as well as uh, Asians also tend to age and show certain characteristics 10 years later. Than, so it's important to just understand that these are overall generalizations. Um, and so when I approach uh, any patient, for many of you that are on the call that are my patients, hi, thank you for joining. I always try to explain that there are changes that are occurring as a function of bone, fat, muscle, and skin. 
Uh, sometimes the reason I may choose a particular modality or treatment on you is because one of those tissue planes is aging a little bit faster than the other, but all of them generally are aging. Some just genetically are born with better bone than someone else, and they've been surfing all their life, so their skin is going to need to be addressed perhaps to catch that tissue up to the rest of the tissues uh, that are aging perhaps at the same, um, at the same level. Um, and so that's just to give you an understanding um, as to why certain recommendations are sometimes made for you, uh, even though by the decade, you might be demonstrating aging in all of these levels. So starting with the teens, because some of you have children that are teenagers, um, and many people always ask the question, when is it too early to start anti-aging? And so I published a paper on this back in 2017. We start aging the moment that we're born. In that, we're losing 1% of collagen with every single year of life, and our elastin fibers, those are the fibers that when you pull, you can do this at home, pull the skin off of your hand, how quickly does it recoil back as a function of something called elastin? And so those fibers are also fragmenting, just as a function of age. Now add to that pollution, UV light, blue light, infrared light, the foods that you eat, dairy, meat, processed meats, processed foods, and sugar. And those things are gonna even be more rapidly broken down. And so uh, that adds uh, to your overall aging. But teenagers, this is a time um, you know, to start implementing some type of skincare uh, for your teens that you may have at home. And so most teens, it was interesting to see, 80% of people say that they've suffered from acne. And that's about right. In a study that was done uh, in the US, we have found that about four to five people are gonna experience acne at some point of their life. And 80% of that time, it starts in adolescence, although 11% of patients can be even in their 40s and still have acne. And so what can you do about this? From a treatment standpoint, you can do something like this called photodynamic therapy. We offer uh, this particular treatment that uh, we actually have also done studies on. Um, and this is where we apply something called Levulon, characteristically used for precancerous spots, works very well for that as well, gets absorbed by the oil gland, and then we use four different lasers instead of just a blue light to activate that medicine. Uh, we use a pulse dye laser, IPL, blue and red light, and that essentially is able to shrink the oil gland that is participating in the formation of acne in a similar mode of action like Accutane, but without having to take an oral pill that has systemic side effects. And so you can see after a single treatment with this uh, young boy at the time, today he's a grown man, how much improvement he's had. It will improve acne scars very little, which is the reason why we asked about how many have acne scars. But the key with acne, if you have teenagers with it, is to address it early. Because if you let this inflammation continue and continue, that's when you start to see acne scars. And acne scars are a lot harder to treat than active acne. This is another 14-year-old boy at the time. You can see him after one treatment of photodynamic therapy and then one session for acne scars, where we use, again, a combination of the pulse dye and Fraxel Restore Laser. People come in and they're like, oh, I saw something about the Fraxel. I think people have to kind of get away from maybe focusing on the brand of the laser and requesting a particular laser. It's really optimally a combination of lasers that's gonna give you the best results. So going to doctors that have a multitude of different devices is gonna be your best bet so that they can combine them to give you the best result. A single laser does not give you this result. And then you can see in someone like this, when you address that acne quickly, so people come in like this and they ask me for treatment for their acne scars. I won't treat acne scars unless your active acne is under control. Otherwise, you're perpetually chasing this and you're just spending and wasting money. So once your active acne is under control, like I did with her in a single session of photodynamic therapy, then I addressed her acne scars with a combination of IPL and a Fraxel Restore. And you can see her eight months later, how much better she is and she's no longer breaking out. And so the key, if you have acne scars or one of your young children has acne scars, uh, they're probably relatively fresh, address them early because you still have the cell reserve to create the collagen necessary 
in order to get the result like you see in this beautiful young teenager. Otherwise, in your 40s and 50s, you just don't have the cells called fibroblasts act as active and as readily available to lay down that collagen to get this kind of result where you barely perceive any acne scars. And so you can see significant improvement. So what are my recommendations? And from here, we're going to build. Basically, what you can use as a teenager, we're going to continue to add into the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and above. So it's good for everyone, regardless of age, to be on a gentle cleanser in the morning, a zinc oxide-based sunblock, because zinc blocks both UVA and UVB rays, an exfoliating cleanser at night, you want to make sure it's a glycolic-based cleanser. You could possibly use a beta salicylic acid cleanser if you have acne after you talk to your dermatologist to find out what's right for you based on your skin type. Because a cleanser that's exfoliating will remove any particulate matter of pollution that lays on your skin and ages you overnight. So yes, washing your face and washing your makeup off is important to prevent aging. Then using a retinol that will help with your acne, but also once you go into your 20s and 30s, it's the, it's the gold standard for anti-aging because it stimulates new collagen production. And then using a moisturizer as a barrier cream. Procedures in this age group, photodynamic therapy like I demonstrated, a photofacial or IPL that helps with residual redness that you may still have from the acne, or a combination of that with uh, a non-ablative laser like a Fraxel Restore if you have acne scars. Now, let's see, going into the 20s. Now, I know we had at a point just one 20-year-old on the call, um, but again, all of this is additive. So if you're in your 50s, you're still many of these changes are still happening. Uh, they start in the 20s. So it's, I'm going to just be adding on. So this is relevant for everyone on the call. In our 20s, we don't have a lot of aging that's going on. I'll be going into, again, bone, fat, muscle, and skin. But what we do see in our 20s, and the reason why people sometimes get augmentations or fillers or injectables in their 20s is because there's a concept of beautification. Ultimately, this concept should really cross all decades. Uh, it's not just about filling lines and wrinkles, but it's really trying to preserve and restore ideal proportions. So in your 20s, some people will start to realize that they have kind of like a micronathic jaw, we call it, or a small jawbone. They are going to notice this a bit and they may want a little bit of chin filler or jawline filler to restore more ideal feminine proportions, as well as men. If a man has a weaker jaw, he doesn't look as attractive because he's not as masculine appearing. So you may be able to do filler, not because you're aging per se in your 20s, but because you're trying to beautify or make yourself more attractive and achieve a more masculine appearing ratio or a more feminine appearing ratio. So there's the concept of beautification. That's the reason why lips are so popular in your 20s, because people that are genetically born with a smaller lip give, you know, based on their overall facial structure, may want to have a lip that fits their face. The problem becomes in that if you choose the wrong injector, I always tell my patients that it's like building a house and it's like building the foundation of a house. So if you do a syringe of filler because you went to the mall and you were buying a pair of shoes and it was on sale, that's probably not the choice that your 40 year old self is gonna be very happy with because every time you add to that filler, by the time you've injected your lip three times, you most likely are gonna have something there seven to 10 years later, even if you don't add anything again. So these studies that are, you know, that are done to say that a filler lasts a year or two years, that's because the trial lasted a year or two years, not because the product is completely gone. And it's also not done with adding filler every eight months or every year. So be mindful of who you go to because you only have one face. And so in our 20s, what we start to see um, is at the age of 25, you start to see a widening of the bone around the eye. That's why people that genetically already have uh, a hollow eye or have always had eyes that look a bit tired really start to notice it in their later 20s. Also, the mid bone right here next to your nose that supports your nose called the maxilla, that also starts to resorb a bit. So you may start to see the beginnings of a nasal labial fold. That doesn't mean you need to go get rid of them, but this is the reason why you're having them. 
And now if you were genetically blessed with having a weak maxilla or a weak, you know, uh, bone that supports the tissue around your eye or having a weak jaw bone, then these things are just only gonna be accentuated, which is the reason why it's not completely absurd if a 20 year old is doing some of these procedures, if genetically they already, um, already had a little bit of weak bone in that area to begin with. So this is an example, beautiful 26 year old, really beautiful open big eyes, um, nice cheekbones, but she came in asking for her lips to be done. But that's not the problem. She notices something's wrong, but what's wrong is the bone supporting her lip is weak, and that's her jawbone. So you can see nine months after injecting a little bit of product along the back of her jaw as well as into her chin, she's got more pro ideal proportions. Her jawline matches her cheeks. And so she looks more attractive. So it's not that she was trying to add a bunch of product to make herself look different. She was just trying to restore more ideal proportions because she wasn't born with the jaw bone to, to support her tissue and also that would match her mid face. This is another beautiful patient. Many of you who are my patients might recognize her. She's my medical assistant. Again, she has a little bit of a weak maxilla, this bone right here, that makes her look flat and a bit tired or hollow under her eye. And she has a bit of a weak chin. So a little bit of weak bone, right? And so by putting a little sculpture in her mid face and putting a little bit of voluma to her chin, I've just restored more ideal proportions. And so even though she's two years older in the after photo, she looks a little bit better. So this is where it's important for whoever you go see um, that they have an understanding as to why you're, you're, you're complaining of the, the, the problems that you're noticing uh, and to be able to direct you properly. Because someone like this might come in saying that they want their lips done and if they did their lips, they would look peculiar because they don't have the chin to support a bigger lip. And it's not just women, it's men. So he's a male model. Uh, in the before photo, he's in his mid twenties. In the after photo, he's now 30. And in men as well, by widening the jaw, you can make him look appear more masculine. Um, and so just putting a little bit of radius in him made him look more attractive. So here it's not anti-aging per se, it's more beautification. Muscle. Well, the reason why people start doing Botox Javo, Xeomin, or Dysport in their 20s is because you're losing that bone. That bone loss starts at 25. Muscles like to find a nice resting tone after they have been smiling all day, raising your brows all day, frowning all day, or squinting in the sun all day. And so if you don't have the bone to support that muscle, it starts to create some lines after you've been using those muscles throughout the day. And so this is when you start to see lines at movement. You may not notice them at rest yet. And so when is it too young to start anti-aging? People do Botox here because you start to see the lines with movement and that's when it's an appropriate time and an okay time to relax those muscles. A fine line at rest actually in studies has not been found to actually show or develop until 33. Uh, this is another time where I see a lot of people uh, show a wider lower face because they've been clenching or chewing or grinding. If you chew gum, maybe, you know, just switch to mints because that might widen your lower face and make you look more masculine if you're a female. Uh, and as a result, you may even start to engage your neck muscles, making your lower face look more heavy. I have all these people requesting these buckle uh, fat pad removals, and it has nothing to do with the buckle fat pad access. It has to do with the muscle coming down and pulling down on the lower face because people are grinding and clenching more than ever. 66% of the Western population is gonna grind or clench at some point in their life. Uh, and so this is what we start to see in our 20s. So this is a beautiful example. She wanted lipo in this area. It's not a lipo issue to her cheeks. It's a muscle issue. So reducing the size of her masseter, slimming her lower face in and putting a little bit of filler in her chin, as well as opening her eyes with a little bit of Botox makes her look a little bit more attractive. This is another beautiful patient. She came in requesting for lipo or kybella to the double uh, chin and felt that her lower face looked heavy. She is a grinder. 
And so by just doing Botox to her masseters, this muscle out here that makes you clench, it's the strongest muscle in your face and it's the biggest muscle on your face. By relaxing that and relaxing her neck muscle because she was engaging that so much, you can see how wide her neck looks from grinding so much. You can see how much slimmer her face looks. Um, and so, and this is another patient, again, wide face, narrowing it down, putting a little in her lips, she just looks a little prettier. And so then fats. At this point, um, you really don't have any shifts in fat in your 20s. Uh, people perceive that they have excess fat. Be careful who you go to and make sure that they have an understanding of what's muscle that's causing your lower facial heaviness uh, and what's not. Um, and this is a time that no matter how thin you may be, you may start being bothered by your double chin. Uh, we participated in the Kybella trial. I was an investigator for that back in 2012. This is a beautiful 20 year old and you can see that double chin. No matter how thin you are, this is an area that's very stubborn to lose that fat. Uh, and it's just really genetic. And so with Kybella, a couple of sessions with Kybella, uh, you can see how much better she looks. This is another patient. She wanted uh, lipo uh, to the lower face, buckle fat pad uh, lipo. Uh, in fact, with her, to give her greater jawline definition, all I did was all therapy. So by tightening her muscle and her skin, it got her the jawline definition she needed without removing any fat. For those that are in their 20s or 30s tempted to do this, I would tell you that your 45-year-old self is going to be very upset with you because what they don't tell you is that you're going to have some laxity and a bunch of lines, radial cheek lines, that will give your age away if not make you look older when you're in your 40s and your 50s. Um, so be careful with doing buckle fat pad removal. And skin. At this point, you still may be dealing with acne, acne scarring, but now you start to see the cumulative effects of being out in the sun. So this is something that applies to all decades. Increased discoloration, freckles, melasma may ensue from either pregnancy, oral contraceptives. You might start seeing redness. And this is all just from your first 18 years of sun exposure, to be honest with you. And this is when you see wrinkles at movement. You don't see them at rest. And so doing something as easy as an IPL. This patient's half Japanese, half Caucasian. With a, one IPL, you can see a significant improvement in a month. Not all her freckles are gone, but they're better. This is someone in her late 20s. She's got melasma. It's different than just those individual freckles. And so in this condition, there is no cure. Maybe when you go into menopause and your hormone levels drop, they may, it may get better. Um, but otherwise, this is something that just requires constant maintenance. I did a Fraxel dual on her, and you can see how much better her pigment is, but it's not all gone. Melasma is much more stubborn to treat. And then this is a patient with acne scars from her teens. She's in her early 20s. Using a combination of a pulse dye laser and a Fraxel Restore, you can see how much better her skin is. So the younger you treat acne scars, not that if in your 40s or in your 50s you should forget about it, if it's always bothered you, but the younger you are, uh, the more effective these treatments can be. Just after two treatments with the Fraxel pulse dye laser combination, here she is seven months later, and her scars are almost imperceptible. And so, Again, we're basically adding to what we were doing in our teens. Um, but in our 20s, we know that our antioxidant levels have dropped down. So we don't have the antioxidant reserve to fight against pollution. So pigmentation goes up, which is why you need IPLs and other things if you're bothered by your pigmentation, not because it's an emergency or you need anything. Uh, so that's a time where you may add an antioxidant in the morning. Um, it's also a time where I sometimes even introduce a growth factor because you're losing 1% of collagen with each year of life. And so growth factors are like the building blocks to build new collagen. So I do an antioxidant serum and a growth factor in the morning. Uh, this is a time where you could start doing an intense pulse light, it takes five minutes uh, to do. And I almost tell my patients like teeth whitening. Every six months you do one. And studies have shown that if you do at least one every year for up to eight years, that at eight years, in a study of over 2,000 patients, those patients had skin that looked almost 13 years younger. So there is an anti-aging benefit from doing that. 
If you have more aggressive pigment because you're a surfer, you have melasma, you can consider a fraxel dual. This is a time where fat reduction treatments are popular as well. And you can consider doing neuromodulators like Dysport Botox in the upper face as well as in the masseter, the grinding muscle, as well as the platysma, the neck muscle that gets recruited when you grind. And it's a time where you might beautify and restore more feminine or masculine proportion. And then of course, I didn't cover this, but these are other things that we may see uh, in our 20s. Cellulite, leg veins, and just fat reduction everywhere else. No matter how thin you are, you have genetically certain areas that are stubborn to fat. And these are other options that you can um, consider uh, in your 20s and beyond. But this is, when these, this is when we start doing these things and these are the reasons why. So Risa, I don't think we have a question quite yet, right? Yep, we do. I'm okay. ready to go. All right, everyone. So this is another poll before Dr. Fabi gets into the 30s. Have you ever had a neuromodulator treatment? Now, this is just for everyone watching the webinar. And I understand if some of you are calling in from your mobile phone or using a different device, you might not be seeing the poll, but that's okay. It's anonymous and it's just to help Dr. Fabi understand the audience a little bit more. But if you want to write into the chat the answer, I would be happy to to add it for you. All right. All right, here we go. Ending the poll and sharing. Hmm. Great. Um, so this is, that's great. Almost, um, gosh, almost 80% of people are, are doing it. 55% are constantly getting their neuromodulator treatment. Um, 10% are scared. So um, that's interesting. We participated in one of those long-term uh, neuromodulator studies here at the practice where we followed patients who had been using Botox Cosmetic for over 10 years. Um, and we were one of five sites across the, across the world, Germany and Canada included. Uh, and what we found was that people that regularly did Botox Cosmetic, which would equate to many of the other neuromodulators, actually looked significantly younger, on average seven years younger than their same age counterparts, nine years later. So seven years younger looking, nine years later. So, um, and there were no significant adverse events seen by doing regular neuromodulator use. Um, today, I'm almost 80, and I have been doing neuromodulators for over 10 years. And, you know, hey, I look like I'm still in my 30s. So um, neuromodulators are the number one cosmetic procedure in the world for a reason. Because if you uh, don't like it, it lasts only three to four months. There haven't been any studies to support any long-term effects from their use. Uh, your muscle function comes right back. Um, the bad news is, is that your muscle function comes right back, so you have to keep doing it. Uh, and we're excited that hopefully there will be a new neuromodulator coming to the market in early 2021 uh, that we participated in multiple clinical trials with as well. And uh, that shows to last almost, almost six months, um, if not a little longer. So moving on to your 30s. Your 30s are when you really start to see more changes. Uh, and that's again, because now bone loss becomes significant at the age of 35. Now, again, this is on average. It may, doesn't apply to everybody. There's a range when we talk about average numbers, but this is when bone loss becomes significant. And so now you might start to see more marionette lines because your jawbone is resorbing. You might start to see a little bit of orange peel in your chin because your mandible um, is, is resorbing. Um, and so you might start to see loss of jawline finition because of this. So now you notice your tear troughs more, nasolabial folds more, and you feel like everything is kind of coming down a bit. Um, and so the most common mistake I see is that people treat the symptom, not the cause. And so remembering, this is the reason why I'm doing this because I'm passionate about this. Um, the cause is the bone loss. You're bothered by everything that you see in the middle third of your face because that's what you see in a two-dimensional mirror. But the reason everyone else sees some people look weird is because people are just treating what they see in the mirror and everybody else is seeing them in a three-dimensional manner. So the side of their face, above their face at an angle. So it's important to keep that in mind and establish a relationship with someone that you trust uh, so that they, and that, that sees your face in this way uh, and addresses it holistically, not just 
chasing the things that bother you. So if you come in and you're like, I just want teardrop filler and whoever you see is just doing what you request of them, that's usually a red flag. Uh, in my opinion. Um, you want to be going to someone who makes gentle suggestions as to why you're seeing what you're seeing and what would be a perhaps better option for you. Um, and so for tear troughs, it probably is building a little bit of the cheek if that bothers you. For uh, marionette lines, it's probably building a little bit of the back of the jawline and maybe even putting neuromodulator uh, like Botox or Dysport to the neck muscle if that's what bothers you. But it's addressing the cause, not the symptom. And so this is a perfect example. So here you can see she genetically has always had these bags. That's genetic fat pad herniation. So now because she's lost this bone in her mid face, you can see she looks more tired. She has more of a tear trough, but now she's in her mid thirties and she also has the element of more crepey skin on top of that fat herniation. So with her, I did a little bit of filler along her cheek a little bit along underneath the eye. I rarely do tear trough filler alone unless you are in your 20s or in your 30s. Beyond that, you probably have a cheek bone loss issue that's accounting for this uh, because fat doesn't, you don't lose fat in isolation along a line. Um, and so um, otherwise that's when things look a little weird and it may look good the first two weeks after you get injected, but like in a month it looks puffy and it looks blue and it, and it doesn't look quite right. And that's because the issue is probably in your cheek. Um, and so with her, I did cheek filler. I did a little bit along her lower face because you can see that she has these nasolabial folds. If I had just treated her nasolabial folds, she would have looked flat and she would look more masculine. My goal is to keep her looking prettier and looking more feminine because as we age, we start to look, women look like men, men look like women. Uh, and so um, in an attempt to keep her looking feminine, I had to balance her face and not just put stuff here. So I tucked things back along the back of her jaw. I gave her a little bit of a chin. I put a little bit in her cheek with filler, very little. And then I did a little laser resurfacing around her eye to tighten up that skin. Um, so here she is two years later and she looks younger. Um, then there's the element of muscle. Again, just adding from our 20s, the only, the only thing here now is that you're seeing now these lines at rest from all the movement of frowning, smiling, laughing, raising your brows. You may even notice that you engage your bunnies, these lines right here, you can't see them on me because I get Botox, but, um, or you may even notice that when you smile in photos or you do a selfie, you look a little asymmetric. Uh, you pull on one side of your lip more than the other, and that might get more accentuated in your 30s because you have significant lip bone loss by the age of 35. Um, and so you may even notice a little bit of gum when you smile. And so we treat that with neuromodulators as well. You might start noticing a little orange peel like you saw in that last patient. And then again, the same issues that we saw in our 20s, they just get worse if you're a grinder or a clencher. Your muscle might just get a bit bigger. So this is a beautiful 31 year old who started with me nine years ago in her journey. In her after photo, she's 39. And you can see by putting a little bit of product along her bone, how under her eye looks smoother and better at 39 than she did at 31. I never put any under eye filler on her. All I did was build along her bone, uh, along her cheek. I also put very little filler into those nasolabial fold lines that she hated. I just put stuff along the back of her jaw, but you can see her asymmetry of her lip with age. And that's because of bone loss um, along this maxilla, along this bone that really uh, supports the nose. You can see that her skin looks prettier just from doing a little bit of uh, Dysport uh, for nine years. She has less lines uh, under her eye nine years later than she did when she started. So there's a cumulative effect from doing this. For those that 10% of people that said that they were scared about Dysport or Botox. This is someone who's been doing it for eight years and she looks better later than before. Um, but again, you just have to be uh, careful with where you place it. Uh, and, I, and, I, and, and tip and pearl number two is ask your doctor to show you photos of patients after years of intervention with them, not just after one single treatment. It's easy to show a good before and after photo to 
months or two weeks later. Um, but you really see someone's eye and someone's skill when they've done multiple interventions and they haven't distorted that face. And that you get to appreciate after two, four, five, even nine years later. This is another patient. Here she is 31. She came in again complaining of nasolabial folds because it's in the middle third of her face. So that's what she's gonna see. But that's not what I see. What I see is a widening of her face that makes her look a little bit more masculine, a little bit more angry. And so I slimmed her lower face down. I put a little bit of filler in her cheek and a little bit into her chin and just a touch in her lip, just to really focus on her femininity. She's 31, she just looks a little prettier. You can also see that by doing disport to her upper face, how it just brings up the brow a bit. Um, and so it's not just about getting rid of lines and wrinkles, it's about brow reposition. And here she is at an angle. With her, she didn't do anything for her skin, just skincare. So again, skincare can make a significant difference. Fat. At this age in our 30s, we still don't have significant fat loss in our face. Some people perceive that they have fat repositioning to their jowls. Um, and again, you still may have your you know, double chin if you had it in your 20s. Um, this is another age you know, where you start to eat, just see it get worse. Um, but you really still don't have quite fat repositioning into the jowls, not in your 30s. You perceive it to be, but it's not necessarily happening yet. Like in this patient, I already showed you her, she felt like her lower face was heavier, that she had jowls, but that's not necessarily the case. It's just that her, she needs a little bit of bone support in the back of her jaw um, and needs the muscle relaxed of her neck. And by doing that, it brings everything up and, and she doesn't need any, any treatment of her jowls. What's going on with your skin in your 30s? Well, here you start to see a little more dullness. And why is that? Well, you've had enough time for the brown to accumulate, um, and you've had enough time for redness to accumulate from years of sun. Uh, but you also now have, your skin is not turning over as quickly as it used to. Um, and so what used to turn over in 28 days is now happening in 35 to even 40 days. That skin accumulation makes your skin look dull. So this is a time uh, where I start not only doing IPLs, but I add maybe like a clear and brilliant. That's what I personally do on my skin every three months to give me that kind of dewy glow. Um, and so this is also a time where you start to see fine lines at rest. Uh, studies have shown that that sets in at the age of 33. And so you start to do clear and brilliance, um, even if you've, if you've done a lot of sunbathing uh, or if you lived in Southern California, you may even do something like a Fraxel Restore to start addressing those lines and wrinkles as well. And so this is an example. She's in her 30s. You can see she's got lines. Now they're at rest. Uh, where in her 20s, they were not at rest. They were only when she lifted her, her forehead or she frowned. Uh, but by doing a little bit of disport and then doing a little bit of a non-ablative laser, here I did the Fraxel, you can see she has dewier skin. It doesn't look as dull. Her brown is improved. Her red is improved. And her lines are improved. So she just looks like a healthier version of herself. I'm not trying to make anyone look different because uh, she's beautiful. There's no reason to try to make her look different. And so in summary, we're just adding to the teens. Uh, adding to what we did in our 20s. But now we're possibly incorporating more non-ablative modalities like a Fraxel dual to restore a little bit more glow to the skin because our skin is no longer turning over as quickly. We're maybe doing a clear and brilliant if you don't have the downtime. The Fraxel is about a seven day downtime, clear and brilliant. I just had one done two days ago. I'm barely red or swollen. Um, this is a time where you may start doing all therapy to kind of tighten up the jawline because you don't have fat in your jowls yet. It's just skin. Um, and you're really doing everything that you did um, otherwise in your 20s. Some people start doing sculpture like you saw in that one patient of mine where I didn't do anything under her eyes, but I just build her cheeks up um, with a little bit of sculpture to stimulate bone. Uh, or you can do radius to stimulate bone. And so you're just you're not trying to really add anything, you're just trying to keep the regenerative process going. And so with that, I'm gonna have Risa ask our next poll question. 
So right now on your screen, um, for those of you that are logged into the app, you should have a question. Have you ever had a filler treatment? Juvederm, Restylin, Radius, or Sculptra? And if the poll didn't come up for you, feel free to tell me in the chat. And thank you so much. I know a lot of you are waiting for the later decades, but we're getting there. There's just so much information. I almost, we could have done a whole webinar probably on each decade. There's mm -hmm. so much to share. But please do stick around. Don't forget at the end, we also have a little giveaway for a free syringe of Restylane and Kiss, which I forgot to say. Okay, so I will end this poll. Okay. Wow, so 50, over 50%, so 56% of people have had filler, basically. 12% um, are scared, so pretty much about the same as uh, those that are that have are fearful of neuromodulators and 32% plan to. And so hopefully this will give you an idea of where you may need it, which product you may want to use, and what questions you should be asking when it's time for you to engage in that. Uh, for those who have only done it a few times, um, that's great. For those that are doing it on an ongoing basis, um, just remember, be mindful of who's injecting you. And there's a cumulative effect from adding and adding and adding. Um, so it's like building on a foundation of a house. Can you close this for me, Risa? Thank you. Okay, so in our 40s, essentially we're getting, we have the same changes in our bone that we started experiencing in our 30s. Um, nothing, nothing much has changed. That bone loss started at 25, became significant at 35. And so you kind of keep seeing that change and based on your genetics, um, you know, it may be radical for you at 42, or it may be radical for you at 35. Uh, but not nothing is really happening um, that's significant at this point. Um, this is an example of somebody in her 40s. You can see that she feels like she's collapsing. Um, this is somebody who comes in asking for a skin tightening treatment to lift all of this. This is where I explain that it's a bone loss issue. She doesn't have the bone to support all of her fat. So by building along her bone using Sculptra, which they use in orthopedics also, PLLA, to stimulate some bone, she's, we are able to reposition her tissue up. Again, it's not getting rid of her nasolabial fold. It's still there, but it doesn't bother you as much when everything is pulled back. Again, jowling, this is not fat, this is redundant skin. By building along the mandible, the bone back here, I can pick this up. So things that are happening through here are symptoms of a cause that is usually happening behind. This is another person. Now, this is where she already had a genetically weak jawline to begin with uh, for her cheek. And so this is where you're going to see that genetics extremely enhanced because now you're seeing that you feel like your face just blends in with your neck. You saw that 20-year-old, um, but now in your 40s, you feel it's less forgiving. And so someone like this comes in for skin tightening, no way. Um, with her, just by putting filler in her her jaw and her chin, we have now significant improvement in repositioning of her tissue. Um, someone that comes in like, uh, like this, at this point I might consider a skin tightening treatment like all therapy after I've done the filler. And you can see how much better she is. This is immediately after treatment. Muscle, again, not much is changing with muscle because muscle change is a function of bone change. Muscle is just telling us what's happening with the skull because it's always trying to find a resting tone. So here you're not seeing any real change in what you saw in your 30s. Now, if you haven't been doing Botox, Dysport, ZMN, Javo, all of the above, um, what you may notice is that now those lines are deeper in your 40s because they started to form in your 20s, but only when you moved. They started settle, like setting in in your 30s because that's when these lines start to set in at rest. And in your 40s, if you've never done anything about it, um, then neuromodulator like Botox, Dysport, or Javo may not be able to get rid of it completely. So now it's just not that you can't do it. Everyone can do it. Everyone can benefit from it. My mom had her first Botox treatment at the age of 70. And she did just fine and she looked good and she benefited from it. It's just to have the realistic expectation that you may need something more to get rid of those lines if you really want to get rid of them. If you don't want to get rid of them and you just want to look a little better, perfect. 
This is a perfect example. In her 40s, you can see that lines are at rest. And when she does smile, it's not even just lines. It's that the eye looks squintier and smaller. So what I always educate my patients, especially in their 40s, is that it, we're, just, we're not trying to just get rid of wrinkles or lines. We're just trying to make your eyes look more open because that's what makes us look a bit older as we get older. For someone like this, this looks like her younger sister after treatment with, again, just a little bit of zeomin to her lower face. I slimmed down her masseters, I slimmed down her neck. Her face now goes up a little bit and I also did a little bit of Botox to her upper face. So everything just looks like it goes up a bit just from doing zeomin to the lower face and Botox to the upper face. Um, so again, you don't need to add filler necessarily. Sometimes it's just relaxing the muscle. This person, again, in her 40s, relaxing those, mu relaxing those muscles, relaxes not just eyes and forehead, but also all these radial cheek lines that you might start noticing. This is what I see in the 40s, these radial cheek lines. That's coming from the muscle that pulls on your neck. So if you relax your neck muscle, you will improve your radial cheek lines. And you can see on her, this is when you start to see those bands every time you talk. If you talk to yourself in the mirror, you may notice them. Otherwise, people are probably noticing them when you're talking to them. And so relaxing those makes you look a little bit more youthful and gives you a little bit more contour along the jawline. It's called the Nefertiti lift. Fat. Now at this point, um, again, you may start to now lose a little bit of superficial fat in your face. Um, and this is a time in your 40s where you might start to see repositioning of fat actually into the jowl. So this is when you actually probably have a legitimate jowl if you have some, some fat. And you can see with this person, right? It's almost like her lower face is blending in with her, uh, with her double chin, but it's that, that's fat right there. And by doing a little bit of lipo combined with a thermi uh, to tighten up that skin, you can restore her jawline contour and improve that jowl. And this is with no filler. A common thing that I see is that people are on social media thinking that filler is going to address everything. If you put filler to give her a stronger jaw, you would make her look like a man. So sometimes it's a, another thing I always tell my patient, tip number three is don't do the wrong thing because it's the easy thing. I'd rather you do the right thing, even if it means that it might cost a little bit more money or you may have to find the time to fit it into your schedule. Uh, because otherwise you may be left, look, left looking like a man, but now you have no jowl. Um, that's not aesthetically pleasing. Um, so in someone like her, she found the time, do a little lipo, be taped for five days, but this is her you know, five months later. And you can see, you know, that when you remove that double chin um, and you treat that jowl, it's a lot better. And she doesn't need a lot of filler when you reduce that fat. This is another example in her 40s. Um, by doing, again, a little bit of lipo and thermi, you start to see more laxity in the, in the neck now as well. So it's important to start combining, if you're going to do lipo, combining it with a skin tightening modality so that that skin can recoil back up. And it's not just fat that's accumulating, we're losing fat. So some patients that have a thinner face uh, or, fat, or fast metabolizers, they just don't have the fat to coat their bone anymore. So you start to almost see the skeleton outline of the face, which can make someone look older. So this patient, in fact, is 42 in the before, 48 in the after, and she looks younger in the after. Um, and this is, again, years of doing a little bit of Sculptra to stimulate bone and also to coat her fat, um, doing a little bit of Dysport to her upper face, uh, and doing IPLs with Clear and Brilliant to treat, on, to treat a, uh, and improve her skin. All of those things allow her to look like just a more refreshed version of herself six years later. What's going on with your skin in your 40s? Here you really start to see laxity. So it's not just fat, you know, that's causing the jowl, but it's some skin and it's also the neck. This is where you have to start thinking about doing things for your neck because the neck is not as easy um, and you can't add a bunch of volume to it and you can't be so aggressive with your lasers. Um, so it's, it's time to start doing preventative things for the neck. Um, and this is when people really start to see this under eye crepiness. And the biggest mistake with that is that they want to do filler to address it. Filler does not do anything for your 
crepiness of the skin. Uh, it can do to a degree when you do maybe sculpture or radius, but that's a, that's a laser issue under the eye. So uh, this is an example of pigmentation, melasma in a patient who's 40. She's 40 in her before photo. She's 45 in her after photo. She looks almost prettier and younger in her after photo just by keeping her skin looking more even toned, less dull. Um, by doing Botox regularly, uh, and by doing very, very, very small bits of filler into her cheeks to keep her a little round, and Botox to her masseters to slim in her lower face. This is another patient. She started in her 40s, 46. Here she is four years later, um, after we had done, again, Sculptra uh, to her, her mid-face, temples, jawline filler with Voluma, and then doing laser resurfacing. Because again, for that crepiness under the eye, uh, it's really laser resurfacing that you need. And it's not just women, but it's men too. You know, this is an avid cycler. So after years of being out in the sun, his skin looks dull. It's not just pigment that's causing that dullness, but it's that lack of skin turnover that's just piling up. And so to give him a little bit more youth and glow to his skin, I did, again, laser resurfacing with him, but I also put a little bit of filler back through his jaw and his lateral cheek to lift up some of his nasolabial folds. And with that, let's see. And then again, for people that have already a full face, but they notice that it's kind of just, it's not as taut anymore, Things like all therapy. Um, these are full faces. If you add filler to these faces, it's not gonna look quite right, but you can do all therapy and it can just kind of tighten up all of that tissue. Also for that tissue right underneath the neck that starts to pile up and you start to see, especially on, on your phone. So in your 40s or 50s or 60s, you're still doing all of this. You're still doing all of this. You're still doing all of this, but now you've added a, possibly an ablative laser resurfacing, like a, a fraxel repair. In our office, we do a series of five lasers when we do uh, fully ablative laser resurfacing because we have over 50 lasers and devices to give you those kinds of results. So again, it's seeing a doctor that's going to customize the laser um, combination for you. So before I move on, um, I know we're, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna be quick. Um, but all of these decades have been relevant for everyone. I wanna just highlight that. Um, so Risa, do we have a poll question? Yep, we'll do this real fast. So have you ever done a skin tightening treatment such as O-therapy or Thermy? Yes, no, but I want to or plan to, or no, I'm scared. And I'm watching the chat too for the few of you that are there. A lot of participants today. Yeah, um, thank, thank you guys so much. Point. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Mm, okay. So so interesting. So um, this is the the one the one procedure that people have done less of. It seems sixty five percent have not, but they plan to. 20% are scared. So I would tell you that this is one of the least, like least invasive, least downtime um, procedures that have really a very low, um, you know, uh, risk profile. Uh, I do all therapy every single year on my face. Um, and it just kind of keeps everything tight uh, and it keeps me looking natural without having to rely on a bunch of filler to keep my face up. Um, so I highly recommend it, not just for the face, but for the whole body. Um, but uh, as far as uh, those that are doing it, a uh, great start, especially for the neck, because you've got to keep your neck matching your, the rest of your face. So once we get into our 50s, this is where we see exponential bone loss, especially for women. When you go into menopause, you lose 30% of your intrinsic collagen production in the first three years. So it's not just your skin, but it's your bone. This is a time where you should be seeing a functional medicine doctor um, to see if they can optimize your hormones because I can do all the magic in the world, but your hormo hormones are, the, are much stronger than anything that I can do. Uh, and it's the fuel uh, to keep building that bone. And that bone is what holds everything up. 
So bone is critical. You still have all the changes that we were seeing. They're just, you know, getting worse. Uh, so under eyes look a little bit more hollow. Nasolabial folds look a little bit more deeper. Jowls look a little bit more pronounced because you've lost some bone in the back of your jaw. The chin is curling in. You're seeing all of this fall. All of it is just getting worse. But if you're, if, if you're going through menopause, you may look at yourself and be like, I aged overnight, and that's the reason why. It's that hormonal drop. So um, really seeing a functional medicine doctor in your area uh, to kind of guide you through that shift. Uh, looking at vitamin D and calcium to supplement that bone is essential. Uh, a muscle. So I'm just show you the before and after photos at the end, because at this point, once you go into your 50s, it's, it's more than just like doing Botox or doing filler. All of these things are, are, are happening at the same time. Um, and so now you're really looking at a more combination approach. Because you're losing so much bone, your lines are going to be so much deeper, even at rest, especially if you've never done uh, any Botox, Dysport, or Xeomin. If you've been doing it for the last 10 years, like you saw in that beautiful 50-year-old, you're fine. You may not see lines that are deep at all, um, but they. this is a time where you're going to absolutely want to do some laser resurfacing uh, if you haven't done anything to really get rid of that crepiness under the eye, the lines around the eyes. And what we really start to see are those barcode lines or lines around the mouth, even if you've never smoked. Uh, so you're not alone if you've never smoked and you're wondering why is this happening to me. This is the one time where you do have a shift in your fat pads. So we lose this little fat pad uh, or it significantly decreases. And that's that buckle fat pad that at your 20s, you really wanted to remove. Well, now by age, you are losing it. Uh, and so you see a descent in your cheek um, as a function of this. Skin. Um, again, all of the same things are happening that were happening before, but because of that menopause, um, now it's happening exponentially. So I throw the kitchen sink. Uh, you may need, don't be surprised if you come in in your 50s and you've never done anything. If we're recommending a combination of all therapy and a CO2 or a combination of Sculptra, CO2 and all therapy, because your cells that create new collagen are just not moving as quickly as they used to, partly because they don't have the fuel to make them move quickly. Those are those fibroblasts. Those cells get a little bit more quiet in the 40s. And when you go into your 50s uh, and you don't have that hormone to fuel it, it gets even, it, it gets even slower. So this is a 42-year-old. She's been doing regular disport to her upper face and Sculptra to her cheekbones temples, as well as just IPLs to keep her skin even for eight years with me. And you can see her at eight years, she just looks actually a little prettier. Her brow position's a bit more open. She still looks like herself and she just does a little something every three months. Tip number five, I think I'm at five now. The people that look the best are the people that do a little every three months. Um, it's not the people that do a bunch, and then don't come back for like a year or two years. Now, if you haven't done anything uh, by 50 or 60 or 70, it's not like hopeless, okay? Um, just expect that you may need to do a, a lot in the beginning for like the first year, and then it's just maintenance, little things every three to four months. And it's not breaking the bank at that point. You just have to invest uh, heavily in the beginning if you want to. These are not life. Uh, this is not life-threatening. Uh, again, this is a 50-year-old. Her skin's duller now. It's not turning over as much. When we go into menopause, our skin gets drier. We lose the ability to hold moisture into our skin. So a fractionated CO2, like I did on her, restores that glow. And you can see her just by treating her skin how much younger she looks. So on average, there was one study that added a bunch of brown, red, and wrinkles to the same structured face. Okay, so no fillers, same structured face. And it made the face on average look eight years older. So you can imagine when you do something like this, it can make you look about eight years younger. This is another beautiful 56-year-old patient. She um, was bothered by her under eye uh, bags. Someone went and put a bunch of filler because again, that was the easier thing to do. When in fact, at this age, the more appropriate thing to do is tighten up that skin before you go put filler. 
And so you can see we melted that filler. We did laser to get rid of that blue vein under her eye that was making her look hollow or darker and then did some laser resurfacing. And she looks younger 10 weeks later than when she started. I also did a little bit of filler along the back of her jaw. You can see that that's weakening. And then this 55 year old, she has that laxity to her neck. This is where it becomes more significant because of menopause. By just doing an L therapy procedure to tighten and lift in that skin, and then just two syringes of filler to her cheeks and her chin, she looks a little bit more lifted and the quality of her skin looks good also from that L therapy. So, um, I am ready to go. Okay. All right. So this is our last poll of the day. So this is for people in their 60s and 70s, but everyone should answer. Have you ever done laser resurfacing for your wrinkles? Okay, I'm getting the people that are putting in the chat. Thank you. Sorry, we went a little over, guys. It's okay, I appreciate you guys staying on and we, there are a number of questions coming in and Dr. Fabi, we will still get to as many as we can. I know we started at eight minutes past the hour, so we'll stay a bit with you. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, so less people are scared of uh, laser research. Someone, someone says have all night, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did, okay, so. Um, Less people are scared of laser resurfacing than they are of Botox filler or skin tightening. Fascinating. Well, this is a procedure that has the most downtime, but honestly will give you the most radical result in a single treatment than anything else that I could perform. Um, I usually tell my patients, you don't even need to really do this again for another four, maybe five years. Even if you're extremely obsessive, the earliest you'll even need to consider it or see something that may bother you is at three years. So you really get a, a really big bang for your buck with this procedure. The downtime is seven to 10 days, um, but it's, it's well worth it. And I know I've already done it. So um, I do everything, but in moderation, that way you look natural. So moving on to 60s and 70s. In your 60s and your 70s, again, you are Still, you're seeing all the changes, that bone loss that happened at 25 that became significant at 35 with the breakdown in collagen that you started to experience at you know, 1% with each year of life. And so your skin is significantly thinner, you know, and those cells that got slowed down in your 40s. So now you're seeing the cumulative effect of all of these things plus menopause in the 50s. Um, but still, you're gonna see some beautiful 60-year-olds um, that, that started their journey in their 60s um, and are very happy. As long as you have the realistic expectation that the goal is just to look at the best version of yourself and not try to look like you were in your 20s. So this is a beautiful 60-year-old. She's in her 60s. Um, you can see by doing a little bit of neuromodulator around her eyes, it's not to get rid of the wrinkles, although it did that to a degree, but it's to open up her eyes. Because when the eyes look squinty, it makes us look uh, older. Um, also with her, I put some Botox to her neck to relax some of this downward turn that makes us look sad. And then I put a little bit of filler into her cheeks as well as into the back of her jaw. So she looks like herself. She just looks like a refreshed 60 year old. This is someone who's never had a facelift and just started her journey in this age. So it is worth it. Another beautiful 60 year old. She had gone through some uh, medical procedures, some surgery, lost a lot of weight. Here she is after three months. So maybe it took more than two syringes to give her, her a result. With her, it took about five. We did some filler into her cheeks, into the back of her jaw, into her lip not to make her look like a Kylie Jenner lip, but to have her give her a lip that's appropriate for her face. Um, and so, and with a little bit of disport to her upper face and zeom into her lower face, she just looks like a more refreshed version of herself. And it's not just- I think that, that patient's on here. She just said, that's me. Yes. <laughs> this beautiful patient just addressing her skin right? So this is a beautiful example. She didn't have a massive laser resurfacing. This is IPL. If you improve the redness and the pigmentation, again, it goes back to that study. If you add red and brown to a face, same facial structure, you're going to make it, you can make it look up to almost eight years older. 
by removing it, you can make that person look almost eight years younger. It's, it's kind of shifting away from looking at this as like some vain aesthetic treatment, but your skin health, this person's skin just looks healthier. This beautiful patient also with her, I did a combination of Sculptra to again, stimulate bone, stimulate new collagen production of her skin, as well as to open up her eyes and remove and improve the, that crepey skin around her eyes. She thought it was surgery. You have to be careful when you have a very hollow eye to go do a lot of surgery around the eye because it's only going to make you look a bit more hollow. Um, so just laser resurfacing alone improved her significantly. And there was actually one study that looked at people that did a blepharoplasty, that's cutting of the skin around the eye, laser resurfacing, that's doing laser like I did on this patient, or the combination. What they found was that those that just did the blepharoplasty, the cutting, were only 25% of the time satisfied. Those that did the laser resurfacing just alone, 50% satisfied. Those that did the combination were 75% satisfied. 25%, well, not everyone's always happy with what you do. But the point is that laser generally gives you some, for most people, because it's not, you're not cutting, you're not leaving people with scars, you're not changing the shape of their eye, and you're just thickening up that skin. Another beautiful 60-year-old who had never engaged in any aesthetic procedures. It's not too late. Look at her again. After Dysport, Sculptra, and doing a laser resurfacing. This is her one month after laser resurfacing, six weeks after starting her aesthetic journey. So it's never too late and she looks like herself. She's so beautiful. It's just at this point, you're gonna need more than just Botox, just Sculptra, or just laser resurfacing. You're gonna need a little bit of it all. Okay, so with that, what I tell my ah before what I tell my patients is that remember, uh, it's a journey, not a destination. This is Jennifer Lopez, twenty five years later. She probably has said something done. I really don't know, but the the point of, of it is that she looks like herself, and it keeps you guessing. You don't want to see the syringe of filler that you purchased in your after photo. That for me is generally a bad job. You know, if you can see the filler. Um, Yes, you can maybe see where you spent the money, but you probably also look a bit different. Where in someone like, again, Jennifer Aniston, here she is 25 years later, she's admitted to doing things, but whoever's doing it is doing it, you know, right. They're just doing a little bit, probably very frequently, to make her looking like herself over time. So with that, I thank everyone for their participation. Um, and Risa, I don't know if we want to take some, some questions because I know we ran over. Fabulous. Yes, everyone. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Dr. Fabi. That was, it was a lot of really great information. So let's get through as many questions as we're all comfortable with. What should we say? Let's five? do, yeah, let's do five minutes. Five minutes. We'll get through as many as we can. Okay. Thermage oral therapy for a 53-year-old female looking for collagen building and tightening. Um, and so, um, there's, if you look at it just on a cellular level, there are two studies that show how much collagen is produced. In one study um, done, the only study that I'm aware of with Thermage, one treatment induced new collagen production, it increased it by about 5%. In the other study that was done by all therapy to see how much collagen stimulation is stimulated after a single treatment, it was 25%. Uh, so if you're strictly asking how much new collagen production a procedure can create, that's what, that's what those studies showed. From a clinical standpoint, what does that translate? That's a different question. Um, and so in my practice, I do all therapy. I've gotten more radical results doing that treatment. Okay, this is an interesting question. Um, is it best to wait till after I lose my 35 pounds to get fillers? And someone else said almost the same thing. If you have fillers and you lose a lot of weight, do you need to you know, wait before you get fillers again to fill in that lost weight? If you have fillers and you lose a lot of weight, um, well, if the filler was played, I usually put most of my stuff along the bone because I've really covered strongly that it's a bone issue, right? So you shouldn't see a, a significant shift in your fillers if you lose a lot of weight if it was placed in the proper plane. Um, if you're 35 pounds overweight, I'd probably 
you probably don't need a lot of filler, uh, to be completely honest with you. Uh, we generally, you know, we always say, you know, you lose it, you know, after your 40s, you generally lose it from your face. Um, and if you gain it, you gain it to your face. Um, so I, I, I don't think you're going to need filler if you're 35 pounds overweight. I, I would probably wait until you lose the weight and you actually need, you need filler. Okay, this one um, says, could you repeat what you stated about teeth whitening? She didn't, ca she didn't catch it and she said, you're not 80, LOL. <laughs> teeth whitening. Mm. I, I don't, I didn't say anything about teeth whitening. Um, I think we're talking about teeth grinding. Teeth grinding, okay. okay. So 66% of the Western population grinds or clenches. Um, that was, that's been shown in, in, in various studies and we don't know why that is. This was a study comparing us to like, um, uh, to an Asian demographic. Um, and so what happens as a function of that is that this bone gets wider. When this, uh, I mean, this muscle gets wider, the masseter muscle. When that muscle gets wider, it makes us look more masculine. We look less, pretty. And so even though we maybe have been clenching or grinding in our 20s, in our 30s, we may see that muscle now as wide as our cheekbone. And in a woman, you want your cheekbone to be wider than your lower face. So I use a little bit of Botox, Dysport, Xeomin, all off-label to shrink that muscle so that I restore a more inverted triangle, V-triangle to the face, uh, that looks more feminine um, and uh, also will minimize that bite force by about 20%. So we do see that those grinders and clenchers also sense a significant relief that they didn't even know was possible because they're so used to grinding and holding all that tension in their face. Uh, so I see that more patients actually come back because of the sensation that it gives them than because of the aesthetic result. I hope that answered your question. Okay, interesting. All right, two questions about Ulthera and facelift. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have time, can you please address Ultherapy long-term effects and more specifically, is it compatible with a facelift? Um, and then the other person said, can Ulthera complicate a facelift? So uh, Ultherapy um, is not a surgical procedure, so it's not gonna give you a surgical result. And I wouldn't expect any of these modalities to give you a surgical result. Um, so I just wanna be very clear, these are non-surgical treatments. Uh, as far as complicating a facelift in the phase 2B clinical trial on all therapy, it was done on patients that were gonna undergo a facelift. So they treated half of the group with all therapy and the next day they performed a facelift. And then the other group, they performed all therapy and then they did a facelift three months later. Neither group had an increased risk of complications, and all of the little injuries that were created by all therapy were completely healed by three months, and it did not complicate the facelift even when it was performed 24 hours later. Got it. Okay, um, I'll try and go quickly. What are your thoughts on sculpture versus Voluma? I noticed you speak about sculpture a lot. So when do you use sculpture versus Voluma? I, I like to combine both um, because it's, I, there's a place for hyaluronic acids and there also, there's also a place for biostimulators. So um, we know that the biostimulators like Radius or Sculptra do stimulate a little bit more collagen than the hyaluronic acid fillers do. And that's been shown in, uh, in about a handful of publications. And so I'm a believer in not just restoring and filling up the face and bringing in a bunch of volume just for the sake of volume. I'm constantly recognizing that this is tissue that is aging and I'm trying to almost stimulate your own cell reservoir to create the collagen in the bone uh, that it was once doing. So I like to almost alternate it depending on the face, obviously the age, not on everyone. Um, it's not a recipe for me, but I, depending on the face, I, I will almost alternate uh, so that I can get uh, the benefits of both. Got it. Okay. And last question, and then we'll do our giveaway. What is your best treatment recommendation for sagging skin on the neck for someone in their 60s? Uh, a facelift for, for sagging skin on the neck, uh, depending on how severe. If it's moderate to severe and you want it all gone, then it's a facelift. Uh, if there's some fat and sagging skin, then thermi. If there is no fat and there's mild sagging skin, 
then I recommend all therapy. Since you're in your 60s, you probably have a degree of bone loss. So you probably would probably want to use a little bit of filler to support that skin and soft tissue along the jaw and along the cheek. All right, beautiful. All right, well, I know some more of you asked questions. We don't want to keep you here all night. So please know that you are welcome to um, direct message Dr. Fabi on Instagram. You can send us an email inquiry to the practice. And of course, you're welcome to come have a consultation with Dr. Fabi virtual or in the office to get all your questions answered. Otherwise, um, we want to pick a winner for our free syringe of Restylane Kiss, which is the brand new filler that came out specifically for the lips. Um, we, um, this person does need to be local so they could actually, or they need to be able to fly out for their treatment. So I hope from the people that are still on, I hope I will pick someone who is local. Um, and the random winner is Barbara. <laughs> Congratulations, Barbara. Barbara. Yeah, Barbara, if, are you on? If not, um, we will reach out to you and please in the survey after this, put your contact in so we can, um, oh, there she is. Hello, Barbara. Here, I'll let you talk. Can oh, you hi, Barbara. Wonderful. So the, the, they will reach out to you, Barbara, um, so that uh, you can uh, take advantage of, of, of your uh, free product. Great. Anyways, um, we really appreciate all of you coming to join this webinar today. I hope it was informative, educational, and we really thank you, Dr. Fabi, for your time. This was so much information jam-packed. I know Dr. Fabi went quickly, um, but this was recorded. So we will be sending the recording to everyone via email this weekend. It's available right now on Facebook. We are streaming live. So if you want to watch it right now, so you can rewatch it later. And we hope you have a great rest of your evening. And thank you, Dr. Fabi. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, and stay safe and healthy. Bye.